Hey friends, welcome back to the channel with another movie reaction. It is the month of October, so it's time for spooky movies. And uh, I asked Danny, the animated heroine, uh, what horror or Halloween-ish movie uh, she would recommend. And she said Cabin in the Woods. I've heard good things about it before in the past. Uh, I don't know what it's about or who's in it. I do know Joss Whedon is somewhat inv somehow involved, but uh, that's about it. And uh, excited to check it out. Um, Hopefully it doesn't scare the heck out of me as much as the quiet, A Quiet Place, but I'm excited. If you want to watch the full reaction, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. This also goes up a week earlier over there as well. But uh, yeah, let's check it out. So that means there's just Japan. Japan and us. Well, it's not the first time it's come down to that. Japan has a perfect record. So we're number two. We try harder. What are they doing? You guys better... <laughs> are you even listening to me? <laughs> What the heck? In the back seat, screaming out loud. In the wow. Seat, a giant bomb in your father's van? What are you, stoned? <laughs> I'm guessing they're going to a cabin in the woods. Somehow related to the scientists who are doing experiments. Identification, please. The juxtaposition between these two different parts of the story is really interesting. Think there's gonna be any oh, Jesus. Dude, my cousin bought a house up there. You go through like a mountain tunnel, there's a lake. Would that be the Buckner place? Always someone looking to sell that plot. We're gonna see them come out the other end. What the heck? So nothing comes in or out unless they want it to. And that guy's involved in this whole Dude, lab this must be a... experiment. Something behind it. Oh, what the heck! Time to time to put the picture back up. No. Oh, shit. no! <laughs> Hold up. How about we switch? Not that I. I mean, I put the picture back, but you might feel better if we switch rooms. I really would. Is that a camera? It's a camera. Ah. Oh. Make out with that moose over there. Oh, damn. That's not a moose. Have you ever seen a moose? <laughs> damn. Truth. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I'm just skipping ahead. There. Whoa. What the hell was that? Cellar door. Oh, no. No, no. Why don't we find out? Drive home. Dana. Oh, and. Oldest books, the way of saving our family. And there's something in Latin. Okay, I'm drawing a line in the fucking sand here. Do not read the Latin. Read it. What the fuck? Dolor, igneo, anima. It's doing something. What the heck? This is a zombie movie. We have a winner. It's the Buckners, ladies and gentlemen. The Buckners. Oh. W. In, his hands. in a couple more minutes, who knows what might have happened. I, I am never gonna see a merman. Ever. Dude, merman. Those things are terrifying. <laughs> Don't worry, you can, uh, you can tell to A-Cat here if he's not too busy de virginizing Dana. Why is Jules suddenly a celebutard? And since <laughs> does Kurt pull this alpha male bullshit? Oh my god, these are uh... These sick fucks. Oh shit! No, no way. What?
No stars. Let there be stars. What'd you get? Oh, the bong! <laughs> oh. Door's locked. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, we got the rambler heading toward the tunnel. What? Shit, why? Gotta go you work to do. Why didn't they close the tunnel right after they got in? What the fuck's going on? I don't know. Electrical said there was a glitch of that tunnel. Should have blown hours ago. Yeah, but we didn't get the order. Ah. Uh. It's right there. So what are we gonna do? Jump? Dude. What? Oh my! Oh my God! Ugh, all this triumphant music. I don't feel good about this. Do not feel good about this! I'm okay. Good, okay, because I need you calm. Okay, no matter what happens, you gotta stick. No! Oh, what the heck? But she's still alive. How can the ritual be complete? The virgin's death is optional, as long as it's last. Her death is optional. No, seriously, that wasn't our fault. There was a glitch, a power reroute from upstairs. Upstairs. What do you mean upstairs? Turn the fucking music off. Which one? Someone's still alive? The bong! The bong. It's an elevator. Somebody sent those dead fucks up here to get us. I think I can get it to go down. Do we want to go down? Jump scare time. All the different things that could have come and got them. Oh, that shit we are playing with. They made us choose. They made us choose how we die. Take this whole thing down. Forgive us and let us get it over with. I don't know what there's left to do. Unless there's some good controls in here. System purge? Get this party started. You're all about to be ripped to shreds. Oh. Delay. Yeah. All of them at once. Oh man, what the heck? Hi. Oh, there's more. Oh. It's a merman! Ha! <laughs> you finally got to see him. That's kind of hilarious, though. <laughs> Deserved it. It's different in every culture. It has changed over the years, but it has always required youth. The whore? She's corrupted. She dies first. The fool all suffer and die at the hands of 
whatever horror they have raised. What's beneath us? The ancient ones. The gods that used to rule the earth. We're talking about the agonizing death of every human soul on the planet. You can die with them. Or you can die for them. Gosh, they're both so enticing. I'm sorry. So am I. She's ripped to shreds. Oh. I don't think Cardi has a cousin. <laughs> so now what? It's the end of the world? That's how the movie ends? Wow! Okay. Oh, what the heck. What the heck is this film? Ugh, so... Humanity's over! Yay! This was a really, really good movie. I haven't watched too many slasher films in the past. I've seen some horror films, but not too many in the like slasher genre specifically. Uh, I think I saw the first Saw movie a while back, and I think that might be it. Uh, I have played Until Dawn with a friend, and that was super good, but um, I, I still know the general formula for these slasher films, just because it's, it's so well known. Uh, I think the black guy tends to be the first to die, I think, or maybe that's a different genre, but anyway, here we have this deity who has predetermined the character archetype that needs to die first, and it's so interesting that our characters don't necessarily fall in line with these archetypes and need to be manipulated or even chemically altered to behave the way this god wants. Um, we have the W, uh, the athlete, the scholar, the fool, the virgin, and which Dana technically isn't, but she it does have some level of naivete. Uh, that teacher preyed on her and like she was still trying to defend him. At first I was like, what an odd detail to have at the start of a horror film. Um, but it was specifically to cram her into this archetype, which is interesting. Uh, Jules's libido is raised a ton, they pump it up and they put something in the hair dye. Oh man, and uh, Kurt's not so much the jock until they make him into one. Uh, Marty does kind of fit into the mold of being the fool. I remember like seconds within seeing him uh, get, in, get out of the car with his bong, I was like, it's freaking Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Um, but yeah, he was the first, he I think was the first person who caught on to what was happening in the woods. So yeah, I don't know that he was so much the fool as they were just trying to cram him into that role. Uh, I liked Holden. He did the right thing and told Dana when they, he realized it was like a one way mirror, uh, took him a little bit. He hesitated. He even came back and looked for a second. It's like, no, wait, stop, stop. Uh, so he did wind up stopping it. Um, and I mean, after they switched rooms, she was enjoying the view of him. Uh, these horny, horny kids. I say kids, but I'm pretty sure all of these actors were older than I am now, even when they shot this film. Uh, they're definitely older than me now, uh, years after this film has come out, but they're supposed to be college kids. Anyway, uh, liked that lake scene. There's something in the water. It looks just like my girlfriend. There's something else in the lake. A gorgeous man. Uh, that was Chris Hemsworth has some really good comedic chops, and it's something that was a very big surprise to me uh, going into uh, Ragnarok, uh, Thor Ragnarok, because in the first two films, I don't know, they just didn't get to use his comedic timing, uh, his comedic sense, and it's been top notch. Uh, I think the, the Cabin in the Woods came out before the second Thor movie, right? So it's amazing that it took till Thor Ragnarok for somebody in the MCU uh, to tap into that, I think. Uh, I really liked the setup of this film, though. We got to look at the other side of this uh, slasher film, the people actually trying to kill the group of five. 
and it worked really well. Uh, their conversations were vague enough and their attitudes were nonchalant enough that I was unsure just how much danger our characters were in because they were making bets, manipulating outcomes. Um, but in the end, it was because this is what they felt like they had to do to prevent the end of humanity. Uh, this is how they distanced themselves from the fact that they're actively killing people. Uh, there was that one guy's obsession with seeing the Merman outcome. Uh, that was pretty funny. And it pays off so well later. I loved it. Um, that whole basement scene was really great. They were all about to trigger one horror movie monster or another. And everybody at the lab was rooting for whatever different outcomes. And there are some that would have been really interesting to see. I feel like we got the most basic common one. Uh, like again, I uh, haven't seen many fl slasher films, but I feel like Undead Family or whatnot is just like the most basic thing. Uh, but yeah, I would have liked to see some of the different outcomes, but this being a parody uh, of those slasher films, it does make sense that they went with the most basic one. Um, yeah, and Jules and Kurt are out in the open, uh, about to have sex in the woods, and this is all when all that shit starts happening. I honestly wasn't sure exactly how much danger everyone was in, like I mentioned before. Uh, even after Jules was beheaded, I was like, well, we didn't see her head get removed from her body. Any chance, like, it's a fake head, and she's still alive, and they're just, like, messing with the group, maybe? I don't know. Uh, but as it went on, it became more and more obvious that that wasn't, that wasn't the case. I was still open to the possibility, even after our characters got, like, seriously injured. Um, like, I think uh, Kurt got, like, something in the a back. It's like a bear trap, almost. I don't know. It, was, it looked gruesome. Uh, and then Marty got dragged off. Uh, even Thor, Kirsch, I was like, okay, he crashed super hard into that force field, but, like, is he alive immediately after hitting the force field and he's, like, falling below to, like, a giant cushion or something? Um, I don't know, but the in impact from the force field probably was enough to kill him to begin with. Uh, but then when Holden was killed, there was nothing ambiguous about that. So he was, at that point, I was like, okay, I was, like, 99% sure everybody... Like, they're out to kill them, for sure. Um, but now I am completely sure that they're literally killing them all. Um, I do think it was good work on behalf of the directors or writers or whoever it was to make it somewhat ambiguous who has died and who hasn't. Like, it was possible for all the characters besides Holden who died to, have, to come back at some point. Um, but especially the fact that they wanted to bring a character back on uh, back later, it was very good that they made it somewhat ambiguous at the start. Because if Marty was the only death that was like kind of you could see them still surviving, uh, you would have seen him coming back for sure. And instead, his comeback was a great moment, saving Dana in that moment when you think, oh, like it's all over, um, like everybody's gonna die. Uh, my issue with these people running these experiments is. Like, fine, you have to do it to save the world, but then, after they think Dana is the last one to survive and the ritual is done, they were gonna let her die anyway, so what's the point in that? They were still taking joy in it, they're like, oh, it's whatever. Um, and yes, if she had lived, she could perhaps try to reveal what was happening here, but nobody would really believe her, such an outlandish thing. Uh, but they were just gonna let her die anyway. Like, this, they enjoyed playing, they turned this into a game and they enjoyed playing it, so it, was, it got to be sick on some level. Um, I mean, surely there had to be some less cruel way of doing this. We saw with Kurt's death, like, it didn't have to be at the hands of these ritualistic killings for it to work, right? They just have to be killed by something? I don't know. Um, they didn't have to torture them this much, did they? I don't know. Anyway, um, I guess, I get this is the end of the world, but, like, hopefully, I, I was hoping that I'm thinking that there's probably some easier way to get this done, less cruel way to get this done. Uh, Marty and Dana descending into this lair with a ton of cubicles just full of different monsters from different mythologies. I think for the entire film, I figured they were man-made like atrocities that they got through like experimentation and whatnot, and they just made them look like these uh, fictional beings. But it occurred to me, it occurred to me afterward that these beings might actually have existed in the real world and that they were just able to contain them and for whatever reason decided to unleash a semi-random one each year on these people. Uh, it would be really interesting to know how they got all of them and um, yeah, how they were all captured and what they used to feed them or what, like what, I just want to know a lot more about the process. Uh, and then 
Marty and Dana's decision to let all of them loose. That was fantastic. It was really fun watching all of it come back and bite these people in the ass. Uh, even if, technically, for the sake of humanity, they didn't have a choice. And uh, that guy who wanted to see the merman in his dying moments got to be killed by the mer merman. Uh, love the irony. It was an ugly looking thing. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I felt like I saw a bunch of familiar faces acting in this film. Obviously, Thor is the biggest one. Uh, but that lady technician or scientist, I don't know what exactly her role was. Um, she was chemically altering the five students. I've also seen her in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., another Marvel property, um, as Phil Coulson's girlfriend before the events of The Avengers. Um, Jesse Williams, I know, is on Grey's Anatomy. I have never watched that show, but... I know he's on it, uh, but he's probably the most memorable face from the trailers for Detroit Become Human as well. And then the actress that I wanted to talk about was Sigourney Weaver. I actually watched and reacted to this movie and Ghost Ghostbusters before recording both of these commentaries, but yeah, I didn't know that she was in either one of them. So yeah, I saw this one first, and I guess because of her role in several big scary movie franchises like she's the perfect actress to be in control of everything going down uh going on down here uh, i know she's also the lead in alien or is it aliens i'm not actually sure if there's an s anyway um i haven't seen that either would be a good halloween film too maybe next halloween or maybe sooner if people want to vote for it or something but uh her explanation of what would have happened if the ritual was not completed made dana turn on marty uh, that was really, honestly, really upsetting to see. I mean, I know if she doesn't kill him there and then that everybody, including her and Marty, are gonna die anyway, but it did make me turn on her as a character, uh, and then she immediately gets attacked. I didn't want that to happen, but at least she didn't, like, she didn't die and got to apologize to Marty, which, I get it. Like, she made things right with Marty right before everyone died, um... Not a lot of films make you actively wish for the end of the world, right? Root for the end of the world, uh, especially in this time. But yeah, I definitely didn't want to see Dana kill Marty, and uh, yeah, glad. I'm not glad that they both died eventually, like two seconds later, but anyway. Uh, and one of the last things they say is, I don't think Kurt even had a cousin. Uh, they just got pulled into this for i don't even know what the reason was if i mean kurt said like my cousin has a thing when he doesn't even have a cousin so how did they brainwash him did they i don't know what but um yeah it's a fun movie great world building and lore uh the idea that countries around the world are all trying to complete this ritual so that at least one of them will be successful in staving off the apocalypse and then this one time this one time everyone failed and the last chance for it to work was foiled by Marty, this stoner dude who isn't actually as much as a fool as his archetype suggested. Um, so that was a really interesting uh, ending to this. I would love to see other countries' versions of this, but I feel like that's unlikely. Uh, maybe spin-offs, prequels, sequels? Uh, probably not, but that would be a lot of fun. Uh, sequels would be actually interesting. Uh, I don't know how much the god would destroy the world if... Um, all of humanity is just gone in like a second or if there are groups of survivors and would the rest of these creatures that have been captured be unleashed on the rest of the world uh that would be really interesting to see but pro unlikely that we'll see anything more sadly uh it's been many many years since this movie came out anyway i'm gonna give this an 8.75 very good movie uh enjoyed it a lot and after this we do have one last oh, spooky ish movie coming out this month on um, we have Ghostbusters, like I said, so look forward to that. Uh, leave a like, it really helps out the channel, and subscribe. Uh, if you want to see full reactions, or you want to see episodes a week early, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. Ghostbusters is already up on Patreon if you're watching this on YouTube. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, friends.